Hey everyone, Amy here. I'm going to take you through some of the tools you're going to need to know in both Photoshop and Illustrator to be able to break down your characters so you can rig them in After Effects later. So we're going to start out here in Photoshop and we're going to take a look at this example here. We have our hipster girl and she's set up pretty much exactly like how you're going to find it in your assignment that's coming up. So you can see here we have all of these headpieces broken down, but then we get down here and oh, the body is one complete mass. So that's not going to work at all when we go to rig. We need to actually break this stuff up. So what we want to do is we actually want to come in and take all these pieces apart, right? So I'm going to focus on this arm right here, the shoulder joint, as an example of some of the tools you're going to use to do this. So we're going to start out using the pen tool here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer and we're going to hit P for your pen tool. And what I want to do is I'm going to put a point right here at this intersection where these two little things meet. And I'm going to come up to right where this curve starts because we can see this nice curve here. Sometimes you won't see it and you'll need to use your marker as a guide. But in this case, we're lucky that this texture is giving us a good indication of where the shoulder is kind of going to hill over like this. So we'll put another anchor point here and I'm going to pull this time and I'm going to hold shift. So I'm basically making these little handlebars here. And you'll see what they do now when I actually come over here. You can see I've got a curve in my line. So I'm going to hold shift on this one also. And this is to keep my handles locked nice and parallel, which will give me a much nicer curve. So now we've got those two points down. And we really don't need to get too precise on this other side. Because if you look, this checkered background, this is all just alpha. So blank data back here. So what we can do is just go all the way around and make sure we're just getting around this arm entirely and that we don't take any pieces of this stuff. And we're going to come right back here. And that's our final point. So this is all one path now. So now we need to actually make sure this path stays preserved. So we're going to go up to Window and Paths. And I actually had paths up here in my Layers palette, but that's where you're going to find it if you don't have that pulled up. And we're going to double click on our work path and I'm going to give it a name. So in this case, it's going to be left arm. And that's because this is actually the character's left arm, even though it's on our right. All right, so now we've got our path, but you can see it's a little bit funky up here and I might want to adjust this over a little bit too. So the nice thing about paths is that they are selections that retain their editability. Whereas if you're using something like a lasso tool, you really only get one shot to make this correct. So we need to edit this path now. And if I hit A, it's going to bring me to my path selection tool, which will select the entire path and move it, which is not quite what I want. So if I come over here, you can see I can hold this down and then I can go to my direct selection tool. And that's the one that allows me to just pull certain points. So if I just select this little point here, I can now drag it over and just Tighten that up a little bit. And the same thing up here, which I'm actually going to zoom in. And I'm going to get this a lot closer in. You can see I'm a little bit off here. So we'll just tuck that in. And then we'll grab this point here and just scooch that in a bit. And same thing with this. And then we'll just hold shift and pull our little handlebar down a bit. And you can see that fits pretty nicely along that curve there. All right, so now that we've got this path actually made and tweaked to our liking, what we're going to do is make it a selection. So we're going to hit Command or Control on this little square here. And that's going to create our little marching ant guys for our selection. So now that that's selected, what I like to do in case I screw something up is I'm actually going to make a copy of this body first and I'm just going to turn it off, bump it below here, and then just leave it alone. So what I'm going to do next with the selection made is I'm going to hit Command X and that's going to cut the selection. And now I'm going to hit Command Shift V and Command Shift V actually does a paste in place instead of a normal paste. So if I undo that and I just hit Command V, you can see it pastes it in the middle of the body, which is not what we want. 
So remember, Command Shift V, and it will paste it right back from where it originated. So now we have this arm separated off of the body. But you can see that this creates a new problem. We have this big old white space here where we need this background filled in and this shirt to carry over with all of this nice texture and stuff. So now let's address that. First, I'm going to name this really quick, though. Okay, so let's tackle getting this filled in in the background here. So in this case, I just need my arm pretty much as a guide. So I'm going to just turn the opacity down a bit. I'm going to turn it way down, actually. And I just kind of have to make a good, educated guess as to how this would actually look beneath here. So we're going to use our artistic judgment here, and we'll create a new layer. And this time, you can see these characters kind of have these nice angles to it. So instead of doing a pen path, I'm actually just going to use something different. We'll use our polygonal lasso tool. Not the regular lasso, this guy right here. The difference is this one is kind of like a scribbly tool where you can just make like a circle like that and it's very nice and easy to get these kind of organic flowing lines. We don't want that in this case. We need something rigid. So we're going to select our polygon lasso tool and we're going to come in and just make, let's get in here a little bit tighter so we can get really nice and accurate because we only get one shot at this with these lasso tools. So we're going to come in and I'm going to hit right here and I'm going to guess that it comes to about here and I'm going to come up to here. And then we'll come down over and we'll go to the end there. So now that we have that shape made with our polygon lasso tool, I'm going to make sure that my fill color just matches up to this background of the shirt. So we'll sample it right in about there. And we're going to make sure that we're on our new layer here. And I'm going to hit Alt Delete and that will fill it with the foreground color that we just selected. So we can get rid of that selection now. And you can see that we've got this uh, nice angle here. But we do need to fill in this little bit of a round spot here. Let me get in real tight. So I, I'm just going to grab our trusty pen tool and I'm going to come in and draw a nice quick little path here. Try and get it as round as possible to match that shoulder. I'm going to clean that up a little bit. All right, and then same procedure as before. We've got our work path on top and command click to select that guy and then alt delete and now that's filled in so we have this kind of rounded area for our joint and we can hit command d to deselect so now we've got this kind of body shape for her so that when her arm moves it'll look more natural so we can actually come in and merge this now to the body so what I want to do is I want to drag this below the body and let me turn this arm off so we can see better what's going on here. So you can see that this is now below the body and we have this red fill here. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our body layer and we're going to right click on this and we are going to merge these layers. So now this is one piece. All right, now we have to address this actual, this texture stuff here. How do we get this texture looking good across here? Well, what we need to do is we need to get some of this stuff duplicated over here. The easiest way to do this is to use our clone stamp tool. This thing is very powerful in Photoshop. Over the years, this tool has continued to get better and better. So we're gonna grab our clone stamp tool. And what I wanna do is, I want to come in and I want to probably grab some of this stuff. So to sample with the clone stamp tool, you're going to hold it, you're going to get a brush big enough, first of all. I actually kind of like this 46 pixel brush because what I'm going to do is just brush over this and I'm going to see if this looks good if I just take some more of this texture and bring it over here. I'm going to get a softer brush though because this is a hard brush. So I want something a little bit softer of an edge so it has a little more fall off to it that way it'll blend a bit better if we leave it 100 percent hard it will just be a hard edge which when we're trying to blend we don't want so let's try 50 percent here and i'm going to hold down the alt key and you see this target comes up 
So this target is where I'm gonna be pulling my sample from. So let's say we want the center of our brush to be about there. So you can see now what's happening. You get an actual nice live preview of that texture and where it's pulling it from. And all you have to do is press down now and it's gonna bring that texture right over. So we need to be careful though because if you see we're getting that kind of dark stuff there from this line, we don't want that over here just yet. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go up and sample again. We just got to move it around until we find that spot. And we can actually sample right off above here. And then we'll just keep going until we get all of this filled in all the way down. So you can see we're getting a little close to this edge here and our brush is going to overflow, but we still want to maintain that brush size. So what we can do is come over to our body here and hit command and click on it. And that will actually create a selection on our body. And even though it's previewing over the edge, if you watch here, as I click down, you can see that we're not getting any paint over that edge. So that's all you need to do to keep your edge looking nice and clean. I'm going to come back and kind of touch up some of this stuff that might look a little bit, you know, like there's some lines here and things like that and get that looking nice too. One of the things that we can do to get that edge looking nice is we can use our blur tool and we can make this a little bit bigger and we can kind of just come in and soften that hard edge there. We don't want to hit it too hard because we want to maintain the way the texture looks, but that's a way that you can kind of soften that blend there a little bit where you're getting any weird lines. And if we zoom back out, you can see we did a pretty good job getting that texture over. And then you would just want to repeat the same thing for this brown line here and this purple line so that it carries all the way across and looks really nice. All right, so I'm going to show you another really neat thing that we can do with a tool in Photoshop. And this time we're going to use the liquify effect. Now, this can be very powerful in certain circumstances. Morgan is actually going to show you a bonus lesson later on where he reshapes a whole mouth with this and really shows you the power of this tool. But for now, we're just kind of going to touch on this tool and I'll show you one thing we can do with it. So we're going to use our left arm as an example. And I'm going to get my opacity turned back up again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm selected on my arm and I'm going to go up to filter and we're going to go to liquify so it's going to bring up the separate dialog box and let's zoom in a bit and you can see here that i have this mesh turned on you can find this under advanced mode so if you want your mesh on you're going to hit that and you're going to go to show mesh you don't necessarily need this on but it's kind of a nice guide to see what's going on with what you're doing here to make sure things aren't getting too distorted and you'll see what I mean in a moment. I'm actually going to uncheck this advanced mode so you don't need to look at all those crazy switches and buttons. So we need to make sure that our brush encompasses this whole arm because our creative director has just informed us that she should have one longer arm and one slightly shorter arm just to make her a little bit more quirky. So what we're going to do is actually lengthen this arm using our liquify effect. So let's make sure that our brush is nice and big and just kind of fills this whole area here. And I'm using my stylus pressure. If you don't have a stylus, you're not going to have to worry about this. It'll still function pretty much the same. And what you're going to do is you're just going to click in somewhere in the middle here and drag down. And you can see that I'm able to move the entirety of the arm. You got to be a little bit careful here not to move too much side to side. But you can see that I'm really getting in here and just like being able to pull this down without too much distortion. There's a little bit here, but we can correct that now. Now, if you totally screw this up, all you have to do is hit this restore all button and that will undo your entire mesh distortion here. So if we need to like touch this up a bit and pull things back, we can just make our brush smaller, maybe not that small, maybe a little bigger. And then I can kind of come in and just like touch stuff up. We can pull at the cuff a little, maybe bring that back up again. You just need to be a little bit careful with how you're moving it so that you don't distort it too much. But sometimes you do want a lot of distortion. 
just depends on what you're doing with this particular tool. So let's say that we are liking this and we'll hit OK. And you can see her arm just jumped down there and she has a slightly longer arm. We would probably want to come and make her fingers a little bit longer to reflect this hand or maybe duplicate this hand over again. You know, maybe do a little bit to clean up the cuff. But for getting this texture to stretch out, that's a really good, quick way to be able to do that. So now we've hit all the bases of the tools in Photoshop that you're going to be needing. There may be some others, but these are just some of the ones that are big tools that you'll need to separate out your character. So now that we've done Photoshop, let's jump over to Illustrator and check out some of the things you're going to need to know over there. All right, so now that we've tackled Photoshop, let's take a quick look at what we can do in Illustrator to get our characters separated for rigging. So Illustrator is quite different as far as how all this stuff is built. It's a vector-based program, so as you can see, I have all of these paths here, and that's what's making up our actual character. Now, this right here is a top-level layer, and that's going to become very important to know in a couple minutes here, but we'll cycle back around to that. So if we look in our top-level layer here, you can see there's all these individual little paths that are not labeled very nicely right now. Each of those paths is over here, so if we just select like this guy, you can see that's his face. So what we need to do is we need to get a little bit more organized, first of all. Now, we're going to actually group off some of this stuff, just to start with, so that this is a little bit neater over here, because none of this is actually like labeled right now. And that's just how Illustrator will bring in certain things files if it's an older file if it's something that's like a stock image which this guy is this is probably close to how you're going to find it so let's go through and actually make a couple of groups just to clean this up a little bit so we understand what's going on so i'm just going to group off his head and to do that i'm just going to click and drag over this entire part here but i'm going to be careful not to go too far in or i'll accidentally select this phone and the hand so i'm just going to drag over that and you can see I got a nice clean selection of all of this stuff and I'm just going to hit command G and now I've got this group right here of the entire head. Now you can see that popped up his neck above his shirt and that's because Illustrator is going to bump everything in that group up to wherever the highest path level was. So if his hair was all the way up here and his neck was down here it just pulled it up to that level. So all we need to do to fix that is just drag it back down where below whatever we think the shirt is, which I guessed pretty well that time. I could also click out here and it would show me that that is indeed the shirt. Okay, so I also wanna grab this tie here. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit so I can get a good selection because this is in a couple pieces. So we're gonna hold shift and that selects the other piece and group that. And I'm also going to take care of this coat really quick. Just this part of the coat, though. I don't want his arms in here because we need to already start thinking about how this is going to be set up to rig. And I'm just going to group a couple more items here before we move on. Okay, so now I've got this pretty well grouped off into the parts that I would want to actually rig. That's what I'm trying to think of when I'm grouping is what do I want to actually separate out for rigging? So I've got my shoes separated, I've got the pants separate, I've got the tie separate, and so on. So this is kind of like a basic lay of the land. I obviously still need to break up all these pieces to get joints in there, but this is a good start. So I'm actually going to come in now and I'm going to go and release this thing into topmost layers. Now to do that, I'm going to make sure nothing's selected. I'm just going to grab this top layer here and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select release to layers sequence. And you can see what it did there is that it separated all these into their own independent layers. You can tell it's a layer because it has this little color bar next to it. So what we want to do is they're still nested under this original. So After Effects will still read that as only this layer coming in. So to fix that, we just need to come in and grab this, hold Shift, come all the way down to layer 15, and then I'm going to just click and drag them out of that topmost layer. So 
Now this original layer is completely empty. I can get rid of it and all of these are on their own independent layers. So I can actually go in and rename these now. To rename something, you just double click on the actual name and then type it in. It's that easy. Now, if I had something that went into a layer that I didn't necessarily want to be on its own independent layer, like if I want this to be back into the suit coat, all I need to do is grab it and drag it in there. And now it's part of that suit coat and I can delete this layer. Okay, so now that I've got that all nice and renamed, now let's actually get in and start prepping this character properly. So I'm going to focus on this arm again, and you can see there's not a nice joint at the top. So what I need to do is grab our arm here, and I need to get something round at the top going on here. So I'm actually going to go into isolation mode with the arm. So I'm going to double click on it and you can see that dims out the rest of the artwork. It also makes it so that I can no longer select anything but this. And you can see up here exactly where I am. This is like the isolation mode navigation up in this top corner. So I'm actually going to come in and I'm going to grab this anchor point here and I'm going to modify this by moving that anchor point to start. So I'm just going to use the A key for my direct select and I'm going to move this guy up to about here just to get this a little bit easier to put a circle on the top and that looks pretty good. Now I'm actually going to put an ellipse in here so that I can make this nice round top point of the joint. And to make an ellipse you're going to hit the L key and then I'm actually going to use Alt to bring it out from the center and then Shift to constrain. And it's not perfect, but you know, I can move this around now and kind of get it into place. That's a little bit too big and a little too high, so we'll just keep moving it around until we get it into that nice sweet spot. Now what I can also do is I can just bring these parts of the paths in just a little bit. Kind of tuck them to that edge there. Oopsies. I grabbed the whole line. I just want my anchor point. Sometimes it gets a little bit fidgety. So let's just bring this guy kind of up against that edge. And that's not looking too bad. And we can clean that up in a second here. I'm just going to nudge it down just a little bit more, I think. And that's not too bad. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to actually combine this arm into one shape with this ellipse. Now what we can do to combine it is we can use this really cool tool called the Shape Builder. To use Shape Builder, we're actually going to select both this ellipse and the other shape. So we're going to use our Shift key to select those both. And we're going to come over to this tool right here, the Shape Builder. Now Shape Builder is cool because all we need to do is click and drag across all the shapes that we want to combine and then release and it's made one nice shape for us. So now if I don't like this anchor point right here anymore, I can come in and hit P and if I hover over that you can see the minus sign on that anchor point and I'm just going to click that and it's now gone and we have a nice straight line that leads up into this top part. Same thing over here. I want to get rid of this one. Let's see if I can actually snag that. And it looks like I had a little bit of a leftover path over here, which I did when it combined the shapes. So I'm just going to delete that. And now you can see I have my nice round shape here. Oh, I got a little bit of a knot in there. You have to be careful a little bit sometimes with these uh, tools. They'll get a little bit finicky. So I don't need that path either. That was a spare. So we will delete that. All right, so now we actually have this nice and cleaned up. And if we need to adjust something to make that a little bit nicer of a line, we can. And that is how you're going to combine a shape to get a round top, or at least that's one way that you can do it. There are many other ways that you can do this, but this is just one way to achieve this effect. And it's a pretty easy way, actually. It's quite efficient to do it that way. So the next thing we need to do is we actually need to cut this arm in half because we need another round joint down here. 
So one way to do this is to actually take our pen tool and we're going to draw a big box around this area. So I'm gonna go right through that intersection there and I'm gonna come up. Okay, so we've drawn our box over half of the shape that we want to divide in half. So now let's actually go in and divide this. And to do that, we're going to use a tool called the Pathfinder. I already have Pathfinder pulled up, but if you don't, you're gonna go up to Window and then Pathfinder. And that's how you pull that up. So we wanna select our two shapes that we want to divide, which would be the big box and then this guy. So we'll select both of those. And then we're going to come up and we're going to select divide. You can figure out which ones they are just by hovering. Divide is the one we want, so we're going to hit that. And you can see it's created a group. And if we look in that group, we can see three separate paths now. So you can see there's a line through that one, and that's what we want to happen. So now I can get rid of this path that we made that was just an exclusion box. So we're just gonna grab this and dump it into our trash. And my Illustrator is not updating for some reason, so I'm just gonna get out of isolation mode really quick. And you can see now that I've gotten out of isolation mode, our path is updated, and this was just a little bit of a bug that was going on in Illustrator at the time of this recording, so it may or may not happen to you. Just be aware, that's how you fix it, is just by getting out of isolation mode. And you can see that we've got our nice divided arm here. And we actually don't need to leave this in a group. So if you need to ungroup something, it is Command Shift G. And that will ungroup it. And then obviously you would want to make a new layer to put your lower arm onto because you're going to join this. So you can create a new layer just by hitting this button here. And then you just grab your path and drag it into place and then appropriately name it. So the last thing that I'm going to show you really quick is how you're going to duplicate a shape if you needed, say, to get rid of this arm, for example, and put in an arm that looks very similar to the one on the other side of his body. So to do that, the easiest way is actually to grab these and make them back into a group. Now, what you want to do to duplicate it Here's a quick way to duplicate something. You just hold down the Alt key with it selected and you're going to hit one of the arrow keys, either the down, up, left, right, doesn't matter, and you're just going to hit that. And you're not gonna really see anything, but if you look underneath your layers, here's a group. So I'll undo that really quick. Hold Alt, pop it over, and you've got yourself an exact duplicate of that other arm which is very handy. So now what we can do is actually go in and reflect this arm. So we're going to right click on it and you're going to go to transform and you can hit reflect. And that'll bring up this dialog box and you can preview your reflection just so you know what something's going to look like and then hit okay if you're satisfied with that. Another way that we can do this is actually to just go straight to that reflection dialog box where you right click and go to transform and reflect. And you can see we actually have an option to copy this right here. So you can just hit copy. And now you have an exact duplicate of that arm once again. So those are just some things to get you started in Illustrator and Photoshop on breaking up your different characters to be rigged in After Effects. There's a ton of different ways that you can do this, so these tools were just meant to get you started. Go ahead and have fun, experiment, see what you can come up with to get your character broken up. Have fun with that assignment!